Grab one of these. Thanks. Grab one of these. There's only one way to use these. It's not like that. It's like this. <laughs> but for the sake of the press, could, would, you, would you give us a great... <laughs> no, I guess not. Photo shoot? Photo shoot, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, thank you both very much for agreeing to do the debate. And the duel is, will cryptocurrencies fail or succeed? But before we start, can I just ask one question? Um, to order to do the debate, you have to have used it. Have you used any cryptocurrency? Uh, never. <laughs> now is your chance. Can I show you how amazing it is? The hardest part is to download the app. And what we'll do is I'll tell your Bitcoin Cash address to my over half a million Twitter followers, and you'll receive, I would guess, over you know maybe a couple thousand dollars from random people all over the world. Hey, that what's never wrong met. with my address? You never. Hey, hey. Sorry, and you can see uh, firsthand the I power argue, of the These are not currencies, so <laughs> I don't accept them. Thanks. Good. Okay, so um, uh, we've started really well. Thank you. So, uh, Nuril, I'm going to ask you to explain why they are not currencies. <clears throat> Well, if you are an economist, and most people in this space uh, don't know anything about money, about monetary policy, about banking, about central banking, about finance, about financial institution, there is a massive amount of financial literacy. You would know that the currency, to be a currency, has to be, uh, one, a store of value and unique numerator for pricing all goods and services. Two, has to be a means of payment. Three, has to be a, store, a stable store of value. So is it a unit of account, uh, Bitcoin or any other shitcoin? Absolutely not. Uh, nobody is pricing anything in Bitcoin and uh, is not used as a numerator. And if you have thousands of different currencies, then uh, the principle of money, there has to be unique numerator so you can have a relative price of different goods, disappears. You go back to barter with tokenization. Um, even conferences in, uh, like this one don't accept Bitcoin for paying for your fees, so they want fiat currency. Secondly, it's not a means of payment. You know, I, Bitcoin, I Bitcoin, that's let me finish. Let me finish. <clears throat> uh, it's not a means of payment. You know, with Bitcoin, you can do five transactions per second. It's not scalable. Everybody talks about scalability has not occurred in any way or form. If you scale, you lose security for lots of reasons. And is it a stable store of value? No. I mean, no merchants accept Bitcoin because by the time you receive the Bitcoin, the value can go down 20% overnight and you're going to lose great. your profit margin. And it's not a stable Time. purchasing power over goods or services. It was a gorgeous so speech. It, it's, not a, it's not a currency. Calling them cryptocurrency is a total misnomer. I don't know that crypto something, but they're not cryptocurrencies. It's just a total misnomer. Crypto something. So crypto something. Yeah, and I believe the title of our talk was Cryptocurrencies, Will They Succeed or Fail? The market cap of cryptocurrencies in 10 years of their existence have gone to more than $200 billion around the world. I don't see how anybody can possibly argue that that's not an incredible success. Oh, he acknowledges it's something. And, and it is, and I actually to do agree. So like the goal of the, what everyone's calling Bitcoin at this point is no longer to be a currency. That's why I'm focused on Bitcoin Cash because the goal of Bitcoin Cash is to be cash for the world. It can do more than 100 transactions a second. Right now today, it can allow you to send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free. And there's nothing that anybody, including central banks, can do to stop it. This is a wonderfully powerful tool for every single human being on the planet that improves the lives of every single human being on the planet. If you're somebody living in Afghanistan or Argentina or Venezuela or Russia or North Korea, if you can get access to the internet there, you can now send and receive money with anyone anywhere. That's wonderful. Why would you not be in favor of empowering individuals to have more control over their own money and their own lives? That's what cryptocurrencies do, and that's why I'm so excited about them. Uh, the value of all financial assets around the world is about uh, 80 trillion, so 200 billion is 0, 0.0 some percent. Uh, secondly, uh, typical cryptocurrencies, if you call it a currency, has lost most of its value. I mean, even Bitcoin with a rally this year is 60% below the peak. The other top 10 are 75% below the peak. And the other thousands of shitcoins are 95% uh, below their peak. Your Bitcoin cash is 95% below the peak. So that's what has happened to your Bitcoin cash. It's collapsed in value in a matter of 12 months. So call it an asset. Asset that loses 95% of its value in 12 months, it's a joke. So your biggest so, objection uh, is the volatility. Uh, it's not just the volatility. Volatility is one part of it. It's not a means of payment. With Bitcoin, you can do five transactions per second. With a Visa system, you can do 25,000 transactions per second. If you use Alipay or WeChat Pay or you use Venmo or PayPal or use, uh, you know, 
and PESA, there are billions of people today all over the world that are doing billions of transactions at a low cost with stuff that is digital money. Those things work and have nothing to do with Bitcoin, they have nothing to do with blockchain, they have nothing to do with crypto. The future of money is some combination of AI, big data, and IoT, like the future of all fintech. So these things are working, are succeeding, while all of you are talking about this stuff that nobody's using. It's just a fake thing. Nobody's but I love it. that you I mean, take the enough. money to come and talk here about this. You certainly made a good income from cryptocurrency. Um, you, in uh, fiat. <laughs> I would never get a pen in Bitcoin. So I, 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 I want my fiat dollars, absolutely. So it is so. dangerous. When someone brings out a banknote on, on this stage, it normally kicks off. What are you going to do with that? So I, I, I live in Japan a good, time of the, a good chunk of the year. Here's a, a one, I'm sorry, a 10,000 yen Japanese note, right? So like that's around, I don't know, 90 US dollars, 75 pounds or something like that. Not all that long ago, one single yen, so this is 10,000 yen today, one single yen was one ounce of silver, right? So that means that this piece of paper in my hand that's today worth around $90 used to be worth, what's silver at the moment? $20 an ounce? So 20, this used to be worth over uh, $200,000 not all that long ago. How is that a stable store of value? But that's when you get, when you have central banks with a small group of people that are able to print as much money as they want at any time, for any reason, anywhere, and none of us have anything we can do about it. But with Bitcoin Cash and, and Dash and even Bitcoin and whatever else, we know exactly how many there are today, and we know exactly how many there are gonna be tomorrow, and we don't have to depend on the promises of uh, politicians or central bankers to assure us of that. We know with mathematical certainty. So that makes cryptocurrencies a much more reliable store of value and a much more reliable form of money, and that's why people all over the world are starting to use it for more and more things, including to pay for their flights and hotels and buy at things that more than 100,000 websites on the internet, it's really hard to claim that, oh, cryptocurrencies aren't money when you can spend them at more than 100,000 websites on the internet. That's a lot. You have had deflation for the last 20 years in Japan, so that banknote in the last 20 years has increased in real value, just to give you a point. There is low inflation in all advanced economies, whether it's the US, Europe, Japan, most emerging markets. So can it's you not define a problem. Low That's why nobody. That, what is low inflation? Uh, can you define like a ballpark uh, range? Low inflation is uh, below 2%. That's what low inflation is. And it's even hard to achieve 2% inflation in most advanced economies. In some of them, you have a deflation. Therefore, the idea that central banks are debasing money with high inflation may be a story for a Venezuela or a couple other countries. But it's not the story in most advanced economies, not the story for a most emerging market. That's why nobody is using these cryptocurrencies as a means of payment. There is no need for it. I want there to make the of I'd like to move the discussion. Them, really. Let me I mean, move the discussion to We know that cryptocurrency are not used as a means of payment. That's a lie. Period. I paid for my hotel here in cryptocurrency. Let, let me move the discussion to uh, a, a, a topic that I think is close to your heart. You have uh, recently predicted, uh, uh, as long as certain things happen, a pretty serious global recession. Is that right? Well, I said that if there is going to be a full-scale trade and tech war between US and China, uh, if uh, Brexit were to be hard, or if there's going to be a war between U.S. and Iran, and all prices were to go above $100 per barrel, those could be a trigger of a global recession. It has nothing to do with the financial system. Those are geopolitical shocks that are going to have real economic consequences if they do materialize. And historically, we've seen such significant geopolitical shocks also trigger similar situations. But the, my question is this. Yeah, but they have nothing to do with if the financial right, system. But, but if you're right, it will trigger a loss of confidence in the financial system. What do you think will happen, both of you, to the confidence of cryptocurrency in that event? Um, I don't think that uh, cryptocurrency are gonna emerge. I mean, even if you take the example of Argentina that had hyperinflation several times over, people go back to using the peso, and that has been the reality. There has been no way, shift away from using that. I mean, if they want to use an alternative currency, there was dollarization. They were using the U.S. dollar in countries where there is high inflation. I don't see any evidence that people are going to go and choose something. But we did lose. see some. We, I mean, we saw listen, adoption. You, know, you, you, take, you take any right. cryptocurrencies. You bought it uh, a year ago. The average one has lost 90% of its value, worse than any fiat currency apart from the Venezuelan peso. Why would you want to use a cryptocurrency when you can lose 95% of your please, value? Please, There's absolutely no reason. As you can see, we are being dressed as we speak. Um, but. But uh, Professor uh, Nouriel, the, the, what we have seen, though, and I'm pretty sure I, I've seen this and I can definitely look at it, is that the use of cryptocurrencies massively soars whenever there's a recession, and particularly if there's a run on a bank. I mean, the, the Greek uh, story is, is particularly interesting evidence of that. 
don't you think? Um, I don't see any evidence. I mean, since the peak of uh, 2017, the use of cryptocurrency has collapsed, number of transactions have collapsed, number of users have collapsed. There is no wider adoption of these currencies anywhere around the world. Nice job of cherry picking your data. So if you look at from now to 2017, okay, maybe the price is down a little bit. Maybe the activity is a little bit less than it was. But look at it four years ago. Look at it from six years ago. Look at it from 10 years ago. It's amazing how many more people around the world are using it, how many more transactions there are on the network today, how much bigger the market cap is today. So. I think that's a bit disingenuous of you to say, oh, look at from the all-time high ever to where we are today. Look at just even at one year from before the all-time high. We're still much higher today. Um, if you compare it to the internet uh, after the launch of the World Wide Web in 1990, by 2000, or actually by 2000, literally, 10 years later, you had 1 billion users. You had billions of web sites that everybody was using. There were hundreds of different types of killer app. You had the web, you have email, you have all the other things going on. 10 years into the launch of Bitcoin, what you have, <coughs> officially 50 million users. In practice, most of them are dead. They're not using it. Transaction value since the peak has collapsed. Number of people are using it has collapsed. So there is by, no by, wider by adoption. Definition. So after a decade, you have at best 20 million people using it. And you don't have a single, single killer app. What are the dApps? I'll tell the you moment, the killer 75 app right now. The killer 75 app is money. of the dApps are what? Crypto kitties, casino games, and Ponzi games. And so the other 25% are, are DAXs that is nobody money. is using. Wait, so 10 years it. into this thing, nobody is using anything. There's no killer app, there's no transaction, and it's a joke. So if you want to put your joke. head in the sand and close your eyes and pretend that none of this stuff exists, feel free to do that, but that only hurts you. It doesn't hurt the rest of the world that are being able nobody to Nobody is using it. So what's the killer app, Roger? So the killer app is money because cryptocurrencies allow anyone anywhere in the world to send receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere on the planet instantly and basically for free. That is a killer because app. Because they are non-compliant and no government in the world can. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that people have control over their own money and they can send money across borders? Is that good or bad? There are tons of people who are criminal, cooks, I'm asking you terrorists, tax evaders, how about for also you yourself personally? Criminals. Is it a good thing that you have access to I, I do transactions across border. My bank goes through all the checking. They're not a criminal. I'm not a tax evader. I'm not a crook. I feel like you're and evading my question. Is it a good thing money? that people I are able I'm to say this? the world in which you can move money to uh, shelters of any sort, tax evading or criminal activities or terrorists so there without you go. any control. That's the boogeymen have come have out, tax evaders, child porn, terrorists, oh my, we can't have personal responsibility over our own money and how we get to use it. So I think it's a difference of worldview. I think it's a great thing when each individual has complete control over their own money and they can send and receive it to, with anyone, anywhere in the world, regardless of where they're born or what color their passport is or what color they are. That's a great thing for all of humankind. You're, As someone who studies to study believe, economics, you would you know that free trade makes that everyone better off. Is going to allow and this that. enables more no free government. trade. Well, maybe even, governments even, will be powerless even, to stop it, and that's Steve why we're Mnuchin all so excited about and, this. Even Steve Mnuchin and Donald Trump were not exactly socialists, said we can't allow crypto to become the next Swiss bank account. We're going to have regulation on transferring money across uh, borders. And maybe that's they'll be powerless to stop that's it. That's a legitimate uh, goal of any government, and there's no government in the world who's going to allow you to transfer money without any control. That's end of the story. If you believe that you're going to be able to do so, you're delusional. They're Roger, can I ask a question, uh, to uh, uh, moving the topic to that, that particular issue? In the earlier session with John McAfee, we asked him, because he's launched a new uh, exchange, which has barely any KYC, if at all. Good for him. So we asked him a question. If in six months' time, um, it's proven a terrorist is caught and has committed a terrorist act, and it's proven it was through his exchange, he said that was OK. Do you agree? Terrorists right now, the number one currency that's used to fund terrorism is the U.S. dollar. That doesn't mean we all stop using the dollar. Should we make it easier? Because it's kind of hard. I mean, if I go to Switzerland to go and give a lecture, I have sniffer dogs. They're not looking for drugs. They're looking for money. I think it's already easy. And how much were the plane tickets that they used to crash the airplanes into the Sorry, Twin Towers? You, your and they bought those with dollars. <laughs> Right? They didn't use cryptocurrency. It's that was true. before cryptocurrency. And it's way less traceable. But do you not believe that some KYC is appropriate? 
I think you should only worry about people that are committing a theft or fraud or doing something that actually hurts somebody. I think people anywhere in the world should be allowed to do anything that's peaceful. And for anybody that studied economics, anytime anybody buys or sells anything with anybody, both people are better off after the trade happens, otherwise the trade wouldn't take place. And if cryptocurrencies enable more people around the world to trade with more people, that's making the entire world a better place for everybody because it's enabling more free trade. And I, I hope that uh, Noriel would, uh, would agree with that. Enabling free trade, that's a good argument. There are totally legitimate reasons why countries impose capital controls for financial reasons, for tax evasion, to avoid criminality, terrorism, lots of illegal activities. That's why so every country like in the world is restricting the cross-border movement of capital unless there is proper KYC and ML. I feel like you, you're you much might, more you worried might, about what's argue, legal and illegal rather than otherwise. what's right and wrong. The reality is that no government is gonna allow what you want to do, end of the story. So are you so more concerned with what's right. legal and illegal or what's right and wrong? Because I think it's absolutely right for people to be able to do whatever Free, they want with their own Freedom is money. limited. Financial sector have prudential regulation, supervision of capital. There's a liquidity ratio, capital ratios. We regulate the banks for good reasons. Any financial transaction is regulated. The world in which you can be having free anarchy and you can do anything with your money is a world that doesn't exist, has never existed. End of the story. I, mean, you're I talking think it's about coming into existence right now. It doesn't, doesn't exist. I mean, really. So it's just a fantasy. Utopia a is not fantasy. an option. I mean, really. But right now we have more choices. We can use do the dollar and Visa and no PayPal choices. and WeChat. You're just having a bunch of shit coins created out of fiat. <laughs> out of fiat. I mean, you're worried about QE of central banks and fiat money. There's more fiat creation by every shit coin under the sun has been created out of nowhere ripping off a bunch of scammers criminals crooks have you ever had your penalty. bank account frozen okay. oil so have you ever had your bank account all frozen? collapse in value your currency has collapsed 95 percent from the peak I what is it worth not the dollar the dollar has collapsed more it's than 95 percent from cash, the peak bitcoin cash in a year has collapsed your it took a hundred years it took 100 years for the dollar to lose 95% okay. of its real value. It took a year for your shit coin Thank you. to collapse like 95%. Very good. It's Beautiful. worth nothing. So, go, go, go. Give so, me a chance. Give me a break. As an alleged academic, I'll remind you that name-calling is not an argument. Right? So I think we can refrain from name-calling. Although he does have the best pronunciation of shitcoin ever. You don't, believe, you don't believe in government. You believe that in the past that you could sell explosives on the internet and do freely so because it's freedom. But let, him, let, him, let him remind okay. you that buying or selling fine, firecrackers fine, on the internet again. Let him buying or selling firecrackers on the internet is not an argument as to whether or not cryptocurrencies are used the world. Wait, 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 wait. 10 months in jail. So you let don't him reply. Government, fine. No, let him reply. Please, please. So let him reply. I think that shows that he's losing the argument because he's attacking the person yes. rather than the arguments here. So maybe I sold nuclear weapons on eBay and child porn and everything else, but that has no effect whatsoever as to whether or not cryptocurrencies are useful as a currency or are useful to people around the world. They're not currencies. Nobody's using them. But, but his argument, they're, Yeah, though, thousands of them, arguments. they've totally lost their value. I mean, you're talking about a, a world that doesn't exist. Doesn't We're exist. talking about a world Nobody that does exist it. No, with over 100,000 websites for accepting scalable. cryptocurrency not secure. as payment. They are not decentralized. You're talking about something. So let's talk about secure. decentralization. Is the dollar decentralized? Do you have a central uh, bank I'm that gets to decide everything? I'm all in favor of a centralized financial system. Okay. I'm all and who in gets, favor who of gets to control that? Huh? Who gets to control that? Nobody. You have thousands no, what of do you financial, mean nobody? There are thousands of financial institutions. There are dozens or hundreds of central banks. There are many currencies around the world. Talking about the financial system exists right now as being centralized is nonsense. And your decentralized financial system is not decentralized. You have centralization of mining. 80% of Bitcoin is controlled by So I'll miners. remind you that... You have centralization of exchanges. 99% of all transactions occur on centralized exchanges. You have, you have the Federal Reserve of, of controlling everything with Italy the U.S. Italy dollar. It's decentralized. As it gets. And you have an equality coefficient in Bitcoin that is worse than North Korea. Brief. You talk about decentralization, it's totally centralized. I'm trying system. to help that. It's uh, bullshit. You call it by giving it's you some, and you wouldn't even give it a try. There's nothing decentralized about cryptocurrency. And this is totally I'll remind you. Centralized system. So if you'll stop give me talking a moment. about something that doesn't exist. Take a breath. If you'll Please. give me a moment. Decentralization is not the goal. Decentralization. Wait, wait. wait. You want to talk about wait. decentralization. Well, I've been involved in this space pretty deeply, and I'll tell you, decentralization is not my goal. Decentralization is the tool that we used to enable censorship resistance for cryptocurrencies. And you need just enough decentralization 
so that you can't be censored within your transactions. And I don't know anybody that's having their cryptocurrency transaction censored because you can literally use it to send and receive money with anyone right now today. And that's why websites all around the world are using it for payments. Right now today, you can book any hotel in the world with cryptocurrencies. You can buy just about anything you want. That's a real reason for real people that aren't terrorists and aren't selling firecrackers on eBay. Did you see the commercial? That was good. It was a great commercial. And that's one of the reasons why people can use it. His currency has lost that 95% of the value, like thousands of other shit coins. So they're all essentially non-existent means of payment, non-existent store of value. They've lost totally their value in a matter of months. So billions Bitcoin, of dollars in every single day are being better transferred. Because relative to the peak, Bitcoin has lost only, only 60% of its value. Great, well, what's great it up compared to 60% its beginning? Below peak. It's up tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of percent from its beginning. So to cherry pick any asset from its peak, it's down. Of course, every single asset in the world is down from its peak. Why would you look at it that way? Look at it what it's done over the last couple of years. Um, the question over here, please. Pass the microphone over. Please say your name and the question. Um, Noah, I'm uh, from Decrypt Media. So just a bit earlier in this conversation, you said crypto has maybe 20 million to 50 million users, but then you just said crypto has no users. So that's a pretty big wow. gap there. Can you explain that a bit more? How many users does crypto have? None or 20 million? And even 20 million, that's with, bigger with, than many countries respect, around the world. Uh, 20 million in a world of 7 billion people who are doing financial transactions and buying good, selling goods is nothing. If you want to speak about means of payment, as I said, fiat currencies are used by billions of people. If you want to have digital money, whether it's Alipay, whether it's WeChat Pay, whether it's Venmo, whether it's PayPal, whether it's M-Pesa, whether it's UPI-based system in India, billions of people today are using digital money by billions of people for billions of transactions a day. With Bitcoin or any other alternative, you do five transactions per second, and nobody's even doing those five transactions per second. There's a massive amount of spare capacity in any of these things because nobody's using them. And I so agree with the not, first half. They are not a means say. of payment. If people wanted to use them, they could use them. Why aren't they using them? Why? Yeah, that's a good question. Point, so let's answer point, that, if 99. I may. 99, 99, percent of all transactions in the world are done without crypto. Let they have all the freedom of using it. Nobody's using it. Let him answer. 20 million is not Let him answer. 20 million, by the way, is artificial because 95 percent of all transactions that Maybe are I'm pretended too nice. to be are fake. Are fake and are all subject to some form of price manipulation. Please, there's spoofing, please, please. there's watch trading, there's manipulation, there's every scam under the sun. So even the official number about transaction volume are 95% above the true number. Let him totally reply. False. Let him reply. It's totally money. Let him reply. Thank so you. So maybe, maybe I'm too nice, but as someone who's been working in this space for almost 10 years full time now, we employ well over 100 people at Bitcoin.com. All of them are paid in Bitcoin cash. They then go and use that to buy and pay for their things around their they life. They lost 95% of the value since the summer of 2017. So I agree with Noriel when he was talking about people all over the world are using WeChat and PayPal and Venmo and this and that. They are. And the reason they're using it is because it's useful to them in their lives. And if we want people to use cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies have to be even more useful to people in their lives than WeChat or Alipay or Venmo or any of these other things. And the fact that cryptocurrencies are being used by tens of millions and soon hundreds of millions of people around the world mean that they are useful to people around the world. And that's why they're starting to use it. And having more choices in the world is a good thing. And if you don't like something, don't use it. If you don't like cryptocurrencies, don't use them. And but don't complain if other people want to invest in of the world them. doesn't give a shit about your shit Coins and he's not using them. That's a fact. Name People calling is not an argument. Who's That's using a fact. it? it Nobody is using it. Okay. Next question. Hi, hi there. Um, my name, my name is Kai. Um, Noriel, you, you mentioned something earlier about the fact that you said that there's nothing wrong with the financial system and <clears throat> that only a major event would actually bring around, you know, uh, a recession. Could you please explain to me how fractional lending and quantitative easing is a good thing in a system, in a monetary system? Well, after the financial... There's nothing wrong with the financial system, that is. Listen, I've written an entire book called Crisis Economics, criticizing the banking system and the flaws in the current financial system. I'm in all favor of improving it. I don't believe that improvement or the revolution is going to be having anything to do with crypto or blockchain. It's having everything to do with fintech. Fintech has nothing to do with blockchain or crypto, okay? And after the global financial crisis, if we had not had quantitative easing, the Great Recession would have ended up in Great Depression 2.0. Uh, ben Bernanke learned the lessons of the Great Depression when there was a tightening of monetary policy, tightening of fiscal policy. There was no bailout of banks or anybody else. 
the argument was liquidate, liquidate, let the free market work, and the stock market crash of 29 became the Great Depression of 1933. We learned that actually you have to use monetary policy, you have to use fiscal policy, you have to backstop illiquid but solvent institutions, whether they are corporates, households, or banks. And that's why the Great Recession ended up being only a Great Recession that lasted a year. So we did the right thing. In a world in which you don't have monetary policy, before there were fiat currencies, financial crises were more severe, more frequent, and recession were deeper, and deflation were much more deeper than before. One thing we've learned is that monetary policy works. Having a lender bank, lender of assets or support of the banking system by the central it bank It only works. loses 99% of its economic value. economic cycles are more stable than they used to be 100 years ago when there were private monies and there was free banking. We have learned that lesson. I think time That's to respond. That's why we have yeah? fiat currency. Time to respond. I think this is a bit of an example of a, a just a difference in worldview and a difference in philosophy. So I'm incredibly excited by the idea of empowering each individual to have choice, have choices in their own lives. They can choose which form of money they want to use. They can choose which financial institution they want to deal with. They can choose what investments they want to invest in. I think having more people with more individual choices is a good thing for the world. And from Norio, we're hearing, no, nobody gets to do anything unless they use our our. Our, our fiat currency from central bankers and controlled everything with everyone all the time. Well, that's not exciting. That's not interesting. Variety is the spice of life. So let's, people, let's have people get to choose if they want to use Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or Dash or Monero or the US dollar or the yen or the euro or if they want to you know, trade it, uh, Ameritrade or E-Trade or if they want to invest in risky ICOs. Let's let people have the freedom to do that. Monero. And that's the exciting part about blockchain technologies because it gives everybody on the planet a level playing field in which they can all participate in the economy and they don't have to get permission from people like Neuro Rabini and his friends in order to do so. Come on guys, give me a chance. Johnny, please speak. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Johnny Fry from a company called Team Blockchain. Um, professor, um, I, I'm just amazed, having been in the asset management industry for nearly 30 years, the continual lies that I hear from people like you, the 320 billion that the so-called safe banks have been fined in the last 10 years because of money laundering. Uh, you're a learned man. If you're going to do something, some nefarious activity, why would you leave a digital footprint? I'm off to California in two days' time. I'll go to an ATM. I'll pull out some US dollars, 90% of which have trace cocaine. Does that make me a money laundering drug dealer? No. There's a new technology which the likes of Christian Lagarde are embracing. Why can't you just be a little bit more open, instead of shouting using bad language, perhaps answer some of the questions, and how can you respond to the fact that the banks are being fined so much money, yet you continue to want to use them, and our, our blessed euro has never, ever had an audit carried on it. So Thank how can you, we John. trust that? Thank Could you, you answer that, please? I mean, it's true, right? It could be better, right? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have security laws that will protect small investors from being ripped off. Uh, that's I would why, argue those they, laws wait, no, protect small investors. That's why non investors cannot invest into risky stuff. And when you know that 81% of all ICOs were a scam in the first place, with people copying each other's white paper, bullshit, taking the money, running to the Caribbean, buying a villa and the yachts and scamming your money, there's a reason why we don't want a small investor to be ripped off and screwed and shafted. And that's why we have these laws and that's why we should enforce them, okay? That's the reason why. I'll let you come back on that. I mean, he, what he was saying, it's not perfect, right? Those fines are for a reason. It could be better, right? So what Roger is saying, it's open to innovation, and that's what this is. Yeah. And this innovation has implied that in spite of thousands of shit coins being created, nobody's using them. So the proof is that... Roger, well, would you like to respond? And there, he claims over and over that nobody's using them, but the fact that we're having a conference here about this with people from around the world talking about it shows clearly people are using it. Clearly people are interested. The fact that the conference organizer had money to pay for you to come here, even though you haven't even tried using cryptocurrency, shows that people are using this and are excited about it and you're using it. I think it just makes him very smart, actually. So, <laughs> to uh, make sure he's or, or, or maybe I would argue very dumb because he didn't invest in cryptocurrencies early on, so he had to get paid to come oh. here, whereas I had right. enough money for well, I said I come here for free. Question. That was so. <laughs> last question. Make it a short one. Hello. Please say your name. Okay, uh, Maru Patel uh, from Xcoin Futures. Can we just uh, put Neural's mind to rest? How many people in here use cryptocurrencies? Nobody's using it. <laughs> Evidence. These conferences happen around the world I think there must be a 10 in London today, all right? 
How many people are using it? Let's go again. Show him there's at least 80% here, all right? I want to ask a question because I think I'm the last one. A back to the future question, a look into future. I think but it would quickly. help us all. Back into the future, if we stayed the way you did, we'd still be trading in wheat and rubbish and is, chicken is and it things a question? like that, and it still happens. What's your view now, having heard everyone, will you change that? Do we stay in the wheat and eggs business? And a look to you, how do you see the use of crypto coins, or cryptocurrency going forward? Cryptocurrencies and tokenization is exactly going back to barter. In any financial system, you need a unique numerator to have a relative price of a can of Coke relative to a can of Pepsi. If I need to use a Coke coin for buying a can of Coke and a Pepsi coin to buy a Pepsi coin, I have no idea what's the relative price of those two goods. So the world that you describe, that you all want, in which every goods and service has a different token, is a world of barter. Even the Flintstones knew better in the Stone Age because that shells, that some form of money, was a unique numerator. So tokenization is just barter. You just don't even understand what money is. Single human numerator, unit of account. So you you're arguing against a reality that doesn't exist currently. So if you look at it, most cryptocurrencies are traded against either the US dollar or against Bitcoin, BTC. Most uh, tokens are traded against Ethereum. Right? So we already have a common unit of account for these sorts of things. So you're, you're arguing against a world that doesn't even exist. But uh, the forward-looking question. So the forward-looking question, I would like to extend the offer again to Noriel. I will set you up with a Bitcoin Cash Wallet, and no, I will thanks. send you some. So you can see firsthand just how easy it is to use, how much easier it is than setting up a credit card account or a bank account or a PayPal account. And it works for everyone everywhere in the world right now today. And it's only going to get easier as each year goes by. And it's only going to get simpler for every single person on the planet to do this as each year goes by. And the fact that he's not even willing to try it, despite the fact that it's 100% completely legal, just shows that he's closing his uh, eyes and plugging his ear ears and he's being left behind. He's, he's going to be a dinosaur how much, if he How much has it. your Bitcoin cash fallen from peak? Do you know the answer to that question? 95%. Uh, no, how actually, long? no, I bought most Since of my Bitcoin no, cash in peak, 2011. December of 2017 to today was $4,323 today. Has lost 95% of your of value. End of the story, okay? And you're paying your So I bought most of my Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash, cash in 2011 your employee, your at about a dollar each. Bitcoin cash. And now I have okay. Bitcoin cash, so Bitcoin core, after. Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin diamond. The total value is somewhere in the ballpark of, I don't know, maybe $9,000 at the moment. So I think I did just fine. And the fact that it's down maybe 50% from its all-time peak. 95%. No, because I had my Bitcoin 95%. cash from before the fork, so that just shows you don't understand the technology that you're up here on stage uh, expounding upon, right? Because Bitcoin cash and Bitcoin used to be the same coin, right? There was one single coin, and then in August of 2017, it became two coins. So anybody that had Bitcoin, like December myself before of 17, the split, your Bitcoin cash has lost 95% of its value. That's a so fact. You said it multiple times, and like any smart investor, I hold a basket of cryptocurrencies. I have Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Dash, Monero, on and on and on down the list. Because smart there investors 2, diversify. Coins, their average value from peak is minus 99%. And the average value is up thousands and thousands that's of percent. Fact. That's a and fact. And that's a fact. And there were 81% scams in the first place. And the rest of them has failed. Those Willful are facts. Willful ignorance. That's Those correct. are facts. Will the times when you could go around, pedal a bull. Why are you scared to even try it? Raise money and Why escape. Why are you scared to try it? I'm are, giving offering you some money. Gentlemen, Those times thank are you. Gone. you. I, I'm Why are you scared I'm to try it? I'm not by you. anybody. I'm sorry. I'm thank offering you free money. And Why are you scared you. to try it? Thank you. Why are you scared to try? Thank you. Anyhow, to all of you, please don't be scared to try. Don't be scared to tell your friends and family. Don't uh, be scared to make the world a better place by using cryptocurrencies Roger, and building businesses. Roger, enough with the commercial. And helping we the love world. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Amazing.